Hello, I am Mary Lynn Van Sweeten. Today I'm going to take you through a brief walkthrough of entering a sales order in Sage 100C version 2017. The first task is to assign the order number. I'm going to do it with this handy little next icon. If I wanted to, I could certainly enter the order number rather than taking the next system number. The order date is coming from today. That is the date that is assigned down in the bottom of my uh, system uh, tray here for the sales order module. I could certainly override that if I'd like, but in my example, I'm going to keep today's date. Selecting the customer is as simple as beginning to type the customer's name and then selecting from the drop-down list, or I could have gone to the handy little lookup and found the customer number that way, or of course typing the customer number. Next is an optional customer PO field. If I have chosen in my sales order setup, this can be set to look in order and in invoice history to see if this number has been used before. My ship date is also defaulting to the date, but I can certainly use the little widget or type in a new date for my promise date. Most of the rest of the screen has been auto-populated from information from the customer record or the default ship to record that is assigned to this customer. We're looking at warehouse assignment, sales tax schedule, ship to address code, terms code, ship via confirm to email, fax, and salesperson. More about those defaults in another video. Moving over to the address tab, I'm going to see my billing address on the left side of the screen, my ship to address on the right side. I can certainly change these or select from a list of uh, other ship to codes that have been created for this customer. I'm going to stick with code number three. Moving on to the Lines tab, this is where I'm going to select my items. I could start typing the item name. I'm going to select from the list and uh, just make a few points about what happens on screen. When I tab over to the ordered quantity, you'll notice at the bottom left of the screen, it's telling me how many items of this um, is available in this warehouse. I'm only going to need three, so I have plenty in the warehouse. When I hit the Enter key to move on to the next field, you'll notice that the unit price had changed from $84 to $80. That's because I have some pricing rules set up for this customer. That also is a topic of another video. I'm just going to move down and I could select other items or as many as I need to to continue on with this order. And here I'm done and I just want to make a few other points before I move to the Totals tab. There are a number of ways that I can make the data entry of this screen more convenient for me. Such as maybe I, wanted, I want to be alerted to the warehouse code that's being used. So I'm going to take any field that is available in the secondary grid and move it up to the primary grid. Alternately, I can use this handy little icon here that puts the secondary grid to the side, gives me more things to see all in the one glance. I, however, prefer it this way. So I'm going to just click that button again and it brought it back to what we were looking at before. Moving on to the totals tab, you'll see the totals for this uh, particular customer. You're going to see the taxable amount, non-taxable amount. I have some shipping weights set up based on the uh, sh ship vias. You can see that I have commissions. I can also apply a deposit uh, selecting either a credit card and processing the credit card on screen or assigning a check number. At this point, I'm ready to hit accept and I'm ready to print the order as well as printing the pick ticket. Hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.